everybody, welcome back to TMYS Academy. And today I'm with actor, model, anchor, and DJ with memorable impressions in both small and big screen. No doubt, I don't think anybody is guessing any longer that I am with Suchitra Pillai. Goes without saying that she has a dominating presence on stage. I have seen her uh, plays and I have loved them. I don't know how many times I have seen Dance Like a Man, about which we are going to talk about today. But Suchitra is also a singer of indie pop and rock and something that we probably didn't know about her and I discovered only today in the morning when I searched <laughs> out that she is an electronic engineer. Oh my God. So, uh, yes. so Zitra, welcome to Hi. the Empire's Academy and it's so thank nice you, to thank you. With us. And nice to be here, Coral. Nice to see you, if not, if, uh, albeit virtually, it's nice to be here. <laughs> I swear. It's, in this chaotic times, the only good thing that I get to do is talk like this to a lot of people. A lot of people, yes, talented. who you haven't spoken to in a long time, huh? Yeah, and uh, <laughs> people who are very talented, I get to learn a lot from them. I get to uh, hear a lot of beautiful stories. So those Thank actually you. are the only uh, good hooks about this lockdown. Rest yeah, yeah. Of the <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Suchitra, with Suchitra, we are uh, going to discuss five of Suchitra's favorite women from Indian theater. And I yes. go directly on to the question that I would uh, like to invite Suchitra to choose five impactful women that you have said, Suchitra, on Indian uh, stage. And yeah. uh, let us go to them one by one, if you could tell me about uh, a little bit about sure, how about you came to theater and then start yeah. with your favorite woman, the first one. Yeah, okay. So let me tell you about how I got into theater. Yeah. My first, my first recollection of theatre is me playing Jake the leader of the mice when I was in the fourth standard in Cinderella. <laughs> <laughs> so I think, I don't know if the bug caught me then, but I hadn't really thought about acting or anything, you know, even through my college years, etc. It wasn't a thing that I'd said I want to be an actor. Uh, being a South Indian, um, you know, I got the marks and I, uh, I became an engineer. I did electronics engineering. And I was always interested in physics, maths and everything, but I never, hadn't really, you know, seriously talk, uh, thought about what, you know, what else. And then when I finally got married, my first marriage in my final year engineering, and I moved to England, I would have had to study two more years as an engineer, to work as an engineer there. And I was not one of those people who was like, I want to do MS and I want to do ME and I want to go and do, you know, extra. I was like, ah, I are engineering, acha hai, you know, like that. So when, once I got there, I was doing a lot of other things. And then out of the blue, I got the lead role in a French film. That's the first thing I did there, okay? Oh. Um, and uh, it was, uh, you know, without any training or anything, I was uh, sent for an audition. I was with a model agency and they sent me for an audition. And uh, amongst all of these trained actors or whatever, Jennifer Jaffrey, Said Jaffrey's wife was the casting director. I did these two scenes and um, before the audition, she had asked me, she said, how long have you been acting? And I said, no, this is my first audition, ma'am. And so she was like, oh, okay, fine. Uh, you know, here's the script and let's do the reading. Uh, you know, sit down. And I said, no, no, I want to act out the scene. She had given us 10 minutes to, to study the scenes. So she said, oh, really? I said, yeah, I'd like to act it out and you play the other part as in... So she said, okay, you can use your papers. It's all right. I said, no, I don't want to use the script. I'll just make it up if I forget. So she was a bit intrigued. And then I did those two scenes uh, really well, Touchwood. And uh, it had me, I had to break down and cry at the end of the second scene, etc. And I was actually crying and broken down and at her feet, begging, etc. You know, what, what the scene demanded. And she was just, I'll never forget her face. She just looked at me like that. And she picked me up and she put me on the sofa next to her because I was still crying in the scene. And she said, now tell me the truth. How long have you been acting? And I said, this seriously is my first audition. And she said, you know, this is what you need to be doing. You're made for this. So that's my first introduction to actual professional acting. Because in, in, in Bombay, I had only done uh, like this in school. And I had done a play called I Love You, but when I was about 12. Uh, and I'd done Annie the Musical when I was about 10. But that was like, you know, um, in the Christian society, you know, that kind of thing. We used to do a few shows, etc. When this happened, when this movie happened, just out of the blue, and I was the lead in this French film, which was about the dowry system, I came back after shooting in Sri Lanka for six weeks. And then Jennifer's the one who told me, she said, how much theater have you done? And I said, well, nothing other than, you know, what I did as a, as a teen. So uh, in, um, you know, school and outside of school, a little bit here and there. So she said, you do realize that to be, a, you know, a sincere actor, uh, theater is what you need to be doing. You have to build your body of work in theater, especially in England. That's where they take you seriously if you've done some theater. So why don't you start, you know? So I started off with children's theater over there 
you know, joined a little group where you had to, uh, you know, during Christmas time, you would have to take the set. The actors would carry the set and go and put up the set and they would, you know, do it for the, the kids in the school or whatever, then take down the set, go to another school, you know, do one Christmas play, you know, that kind of thing. Started out like that. And then one thing after another, I started getting calls for radio dramas, which is a big thing in, in the UK, you know, um, which is a full on theater job, but without people seeing you, it's only your voice that they hear. Right. So I did the Ramayan with Shashi Kapoor, Nitish Bharatwaj, they were flown in from India. I played Sita. Um, that was a huge project, 14 episodes. We were in this huge studio. So that was a different type of theater acting, right? Only voice. Um, and then she introduced me to a lot of other theater groups there. And um, I started doing, you know, uh, theater on stage. And um, one of the plays, uh, well, I worked a lot with um, uh, uh, the Tamasha Theatre Company uh, for their radio dramas. And then I worked on a play called Bravely Fought the Queen by Mahesh Datani, mm -hmm. which was uh, coincidentally directed by Mahesh Datani and Michael Walling, a director in the UK. They both directed it. And I was living in the UK at that time. met Mahesh for the first time at that point. Okay. And um, uh, he, uh, this was a comedy. Uh, well, I had the co uh, comedic role in that one. And uh, uh, did that play, etc. Life goes on. I did a whole bunch of things. I came back to India in 1997 when I had separated with my husband. I came back in 97. The first call, the first thing that I got, frankly, even before I became a VJ, etc., was Uma Dikuna, the casting director. She said, um, uh, there is a director called Lilet Dube, actor director, and there is a play called Dance Like a Man, yeah, uh, which uh, she is looking uh, for somebody to play the daughter's role, the second uh, the lead. And um, uh, because uh, Lilet had just moved from Delhi to Bombay, and uh, she wanted to continue the play. And they had only done about 20 shows in Delhi, with uh, Shivani Wazir playing my role. And I went and met Lilette and uh, she said, oh, you know, what have you done? I was, I'm South Indian. So, you know, it kind of worked as far as the South Indian bit of the character uh, goes. And um, uh, I rehearsed, you won't believe, I mean, we met, it was, it clicked like this. We both of us clicked like this. And um, we rehearsed for two weeks. I, me and her, I only got two rehearsals with the other two actors, Vijay Krishna and Joyce and Gupta. And we were in Calcutta doing our first show, Dance Like a Man, the play that you see in Kural, you know, uh, which is a tough play. You've seen it, right? Oh, yes. And uh, <laughs> yeah. I have seen all of those. I've read it. I have seen the film. Yeah. I have seen the play. Yeah. And you've more seen than once. Yeah. So, yeah, we weren't connected with the film, but the play, I mean, as, as, I, uh, as I said, it's been running all of these years. We're still doing shows of Dance Like a Man, which is over 22 years later and over 650 shows across the world, uh, you know. The funny thing is, Mahesh Tatani didn't know that Lilette had, had uh, chosen me to play it. So when he came uh, to Bombay in between, and she said, oh, this is the girl who's going to be playing uh, Lata and uh, the younger Ratna. And he looked at me and he was like, no way, because my photograph is on <laughs> the cover of Mahesh Tatani's book of plays. And that photograph is from Bravely Fought the Queen in the UK. <laughs> You know, and in that in that book, we've got Dance Like a Man, etc. Right. Et and he looked at me and he says, no. And he looked looked at uh, Lilette and he said, did you know this? And she said, yeah, she didn't mention it to me, but we wanted to be surprised, basically. So um, ever since then, uh, you know, I've been connected with Primetime Theatre since then, way back in 97. Mm -hmm. And I've done uh, most of my best work there. I've worked with a lot of other people as well. But um, um, since Dance Like a Man is my most favorite play, and it has been for the last 22 odd years, uh, you know, um, uh, I've done a lot of stuff with Lilette, but this one is most definitely, even till today, uh, Koral, my absolute favorite. I'll just in one line introduce the play to our audience. So yeah, audience, please. I'm sure you have watched it and you haven't, you must. So in uh, very shortly, if I have to introduce this play to you, this play is about uh, four prime characters where dance is the primary identity, Bharatanatyam to be precise is the primary identity of three individuals and is also the dominating influencer in their interpersonal relationships. Please go ahead, uh, Sajitra. Right. So, um, um, Ratna and Lata, these are, you know, I play, uh, there are four characters in Dance Like a Man, of which uh, Lilek Dubey plays Ratna, uh, the aging dancer. It's, a, it's about the couple and their daughter, Lata, okay? Jairaj. And uh, Jairaj, yeah. Uh, Ratna and Jairaj um, and their daughter, Lata, who has a boyfriend. Uh, in a, a Mar Marwadi boy, Vishwas, who knows nothing about dance. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, what is really interesting is that I play Lat uh, Ratna at a younger age, which mm -hmm. is Lilet Tube's character when she is younger in the flashbacks. Yes. Okay. So the play goes between present day and, uh, uh, you know, uh, 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 flashbacks. And uh, 
uh, it's so beautifully woven you know you uh, so, but i'm the one who gets to do the maximum changes running in between here there everything but what's interesting coral is not only not the, about the costumes but about how interesting it was for me to play both these characters who are such strong women you know ratna i mean first place when lilet dube plays any character it's like whoa you know she just puts it all out there and then when you have to play that same character at a younger age it's a uh, it's interesting for an actor to be able to emulate another actress uh, but put your own things in as far as you know uh, thinking how this one would be at 30 odd years etc etc but using bits and pieces of how you know um intonations of her voice the way she or the way she stands as a dancer or the way she moves or certain things that she does or you know certain actions that would be the same if uh, that same character was 30 years old or 60 years old you know yeah. and then showing that lilet shows that she has a neat pain you know uh, during the course of the play so i show that in when i'm playing the younger uh, younger version as far as the characters itself are concerned coral very very strong woman ratna's character played by lilet and then by me uh is a woman who is i mean of course uh, you know brought up from very very um uh, traditional background and uh, you know she's a she's a classical bharatanatyam dancer who has not re- not got the fame and the popularity that she wanted you know and the fortunes that she wanted she what is married to uh, what she deserved also mm-hmm. yeah and um, she's married to jairaj who's also a dancer but uh, you know from a gujarati family and that was what the cause of the problem uh, uh, was but um, ratna is such a is um, such an ambitious woman you know she just wants to she wants to be the best right and um, um she would she would do anything frankly speaking to be one of those people who really gets what she wants and you see that in the course of the play you see that in her and in, in her manipulations you see that in um, you know even in the climax of the play which i won't tell the people who haven't seen it you know how how much it 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 meant to her there's a big uh, you know a skeleton comes as a closet basically uh, you know which is the punch of what happens in the play but um, how she is willing to put you know everything on the line because this is what she wants to be and yeah. she doesn't achieve that so after that she wants that to happen with her daughter lata mm-hmm. yeah and she wants to live her unfulfilled dreams through the daughter right so as a woman you see her point of view because from uh, you know as a modern woman you would say okay yeah it's great to be ambitious and it's great to have your own identity and you know um even when it comes to a point where you know her father in law kind of makes her do some uh, gochi to kind of you know put her husband down and so that she becomes uh, she becomes famous etc but saying which she doesn't get the fame that she wanted yeah mm-hmm. and which is why she wants to fill her un- unfulfilled dreams through her daughter which is a lot of pressure on lata Mm-hmm. yeah and i may be mixing uh, both the characters but they are all they are together in this that's why i'm saying about how each one stands up to the other lata meanwhile is a modern uh, you know present day uh, uh, you know western girl but with a lot of traditional roots you know she is one who definitely loves her classical dance and wants to continue to be a dancer which is why she you know but she is a modern girl in the sense when there is a little bit of a thing of her her boyfriend even suggesting that after marriage uh, you know i won't like her dancing all these dances which are erotic and all of this you know and she says oh hello are you trying to stop me please you know you know that you can't but you want to you know she says that straight away you know so she's also a very strong woman in her own right but ratna is the character yeah ratna is the character who's uh, multi layered in the sense you know you see you see you wonder sometimes about ratna does she have a you know just does she have an ounce of um, uh, of mothering in her in her body the way you know she's just pushing 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 her daughter or whatever but you do see it because you see in the course of the play why she became like that you know the father in law curbed uh, both of them jairaj and her because of how her husband in because of that became an, an an alcoholic how she was responsible for that but she's frankly not guilty about it so there's many many layers um, you know to a character like ratna but you know underlining it all is the fact that she's an extremely strong woman so yes that, that she would definitely be one person i chose for this uh for this talk that we're having you know sitra i always wondered uh, when i saw and even after uh, later uh these two women ratna and lata are yes. uh, very different in their personalities though they yes. are the mother and daughter so when you are i mean usually i hear uh, from actors that when they are in a character they are totally immersed in that character and here yes, you were yes. within the same time you were immersed in two characters two characters who are very different from each other Absolutely. and then at the same time you were playing the same character as well 
yes how challenging was this um i have to admit it for it initially you know to get into the groove uh, but it it didn't take me too much time i would have to say even from my first show onwards which was in calcutta i was very i i kind of got in there you know really because i love the writing you know when you have some you when you have good writing coral it's uh, more than half your battle won so when the writing is so good yeah a lot of things get explained in that itself you know uh, when you're reading it and rereading it and and rehearsing it etc so that really helps an actor to kind of get into the thing we did uh, you know doing your own homework about the character as to you know what would she be thinking where is she come from you know um, all of that there's a lot of uh, stuff explained in the writing itself but a lot of things you work on you work on yourself when it comes to actually doing two characters which are completely different on the stage in the same play yeah it's for me phenomenally interesting i just have a blast when it comes to dance like a man i really 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 have a blast because um let me put it this way coral you know my the best compliment i've ever received was during dance like a man in london when we were doing a show there was a journalist there who i knew from my time there and she came and she had seen the play two or three times actually you know and she after the play she came up to me and she said suchi i've got to tell you one thing she said you know you played ratna you played lata or whatever on that stage she said not for a second did i see suchi on that stage and that is i mean she and she knew me and she said not for a second so which means when you you know what you said immerse yourself in a character wholeheartedly and fully from your heart and this is a play i mean that's why i tell lilet i mean i want it to go on till i can play your role my daughter will play my role you know it will we'll just keep, keep keep it going so she said yeah i yeah, will do it for before that you play my role ira dubey will play your role <laughs> then ira can play <laughs> keep mixing it up so we did this play we're going to keep it going for ages but um, um the the thing i have to remember when on stage for dance is um, you know the fact that it's easy for me when uh, also uh, you know uh, when i'm playing ratna uh, because i see sometimes from the weekends i'm watching lilith so suddenly i'll remember ah uh, she used to do this you know to the to the uh, the blouse or the bra bra or she used to hold her knee i i can see that so i it's a it's a, a kind of a click in your mind sometimes if you're you know uh, forgetting yeah after doing so many shows but um um the accent etc one worked on it and it just comes i don't know how else to explain it coral but this particular play i swear when i walk out of the wings it's just something else for me i don't think about a thing i am ratna and lata when i'm on that stage i can completely understand so that's how let us move to your next uh, next uh, favorite character yes. that you have played the second woman yeah ivy from uh, august to sage county um uh, she is uh, you know the third daughter of uh, violet this uh, yeah. this is by tracy letts the you know which was also a movie with julia roberts etc i play the librarian uh, daughter in the movie i think she was the middle person but in our adaptation we made her the youngest one and um, she's a librarian who uh, who's very dowdy very uh, non glamorous who's uh, you know completely under the thumb of the mother who violet is uh, again they let to be who is uh, completely um, you know she's a wacko frankly speaking and um, uh, you know she would totally you know on on medication and pills etc because she has so many ailments and stuff and this is the most dysfunctional family i've ever been part of frankly speaking this this play oh my god the twists and turns and the things that happen but each person in that play is just kind of yeah you're like i hope nobody like this is in my family you know <laughs> but uh, it's a serious play and people find some some people find it really heavy but for me when i got to play iv um uh, what's really nice is you know there are the the like barbara is the elder daughter who's the very who's the very really strong mufat kind of character who stands up to the mom etc iv is the mousy character who you know just listens to everything and who listens to the tanas that her mother gives her all the time are you you're looking like a man you know you're looking like a lesbian you're wearing a suit you know you don't look like a, you don't look like a woman this that she keeps you know giving her tanas and she just quietly listens because she's the one taking care of the mother after the father's death and she has just resigned herself to that fate un- un- until the point when she falls in love with her own cousin yeah mm-hmm. and uh, that becomes a big bawal because that again uh later on she finds out that it was actually her brother not her cousin so there's all this weird nonsense that happens you know with this family but um iv uh, initially and why i've chosen her in this discussion of being strong the fact that 
even though she's such a mousy character who's just always you know just like this and not bothered about her appearance and not bothered about the way you know the way she looks or uh, whatever she knows that her two other two sisters are the favorites in the family uh, so she always feels put down let down etc and she never stands up for herself until later on in the play when you see that this one is quite a firebrand and she can stand up to the sisters and say who the hell do you think you are you know uh, pointing fingers at me when uh, you all have been busy living your lives left right and center while well, i have been stuck here with this woman you know with uh, who is our mother and um, so she asserts herself she knows how to assert herself later on when she, when push comes to shove she knows how so that means in, in you know intrinsically she was definitely a strong woman it's all in there yeah but she didn't have the opportunity or the platform to show it until purely she's pushed into the corner and she just you know uh, burst and this is the only happiness that she had found absolute happiness and she was planning to run away and go uh, you know with this cousin of hers um and they uh, turn around and tell her sorry that that's not your cousin it's your brother so you can imagine yeah because there's that back story of uh, you know um violet having slept with uh, um that guy's um, father etc etc so it's a it's a shock uh, to to this woman and that's when it's really you know the the hidimba rakoshi comes out <laughs> in, <laughs> in her and she says i don't give a shit about whatever you all think you know um i'm going to do this whether it's right whether it's wrong or whatever and she has gone through things like you know cervical cancer in this which comes out in, as part of dialogue you know which she hasn't told anybody about so you, you can imagine this girl there's so much boiling up inside her yeah but she's always trying to keep the peace with everybody and uh, but when push comes to shove she stands up for herself and you know at the end of the play she's just like screw you guys i'm doing what i want to do and she leaves yes yeah, chitra i always wondered about this that this was one play which mm. had it had a it had a multi cast of course a lot of your plays has a multi cast but That's this right. one had i mean this had too many strong women all coming together all coming Not together only because uh, they were the part of, they were uh, characters in the play but they are yes. very strong women even outside even outside yeah, yes sandha yes medun, yes sandha yes. medun mita vashesh uh, lilak dubey you yeah. you are yeah. all you guys are all known to be very very strong women outside with very strong uh, thought process mindsets yes yeah, yes you know what you are doing you know what you are talking and you don't need That's any right. kind of support in presenting yourselves very unpretentiously right that's right in such a case uh, when such kind of girls together come in between yeah. in, in the two hour span on yeah. the stage all together uh, how does that time division happens without even uh, without anybody taking anything from each other yes it's it's uh, it's an interesting question you are asking because uh, that was a uh, you know the first time we all got together it's a huge cast that, that cast is yeah. huge you know there's so many of us in that 12 to 14 people of us you know in that and um, especially as you said all of the main the main women have these you know are, are strong roles and they're strong uh, actors who were chosen kitu gidwani was playing meeta vashish oh, role yeah. also before yeah so that's another strong woman you know so um, yes there are uh, uh, see first place i think all of us when you get together to do a theater production uh, coral the first thing you know it's a team effort okay mm -hmm. this play is going to do well only if you put your egos aside and then you say you know we are you and you say come on let's make this work yeah rather than let let me make my character work okay mm -hmm. and um, uh, so that's one big point i would tell to people i mean you know you cannot have ego you know as film stars they probably have more more ego than uh, theater theater actors but you cannot you have to leave that you have to leave that at the door because there are so many times i could have turned around and said are this is an adaptation why doesn't yeah, why is that scene of why these cut out you know and why have you added babra scene yeah but you're working at it as a whole okay i would have to say i mean i i can't be hypocritical when it comes to rehearsal time and when we're actually flushing out our roles and flushing out the scenes etc especially when the scenes when we're all together since we are all such strong uh, strong women with uh, with opinions per se there would there would be you know discussions i wouldn't say arguments or you know there was never a fight where somebody walked out that's happened in another play of mine yeah i, I won't say who <laughs> but <laughs> i had to run behind the actress are please please we have a show in two days and the director is running behind the actor there were two actors who had a big fight yeah but uh, in this one there was nothing like that there were little points of irritations and all especially because it's so 
high powered you know the scenes also last are such as such that when oh, you are immersed in it and you are rehearsing a scene like this yeah you know and everyone's angry with each other and everyone's shouting at each other and everyone's you know pushing each other this that and there that kind of and when you're into it even in rehearsal that kind of sometimes just translate and say no you kya fuck you if you you know i don't i want to say it like this you know so something like that could have come out during rehearsals but you know that it's gone in the next minute or so when because ultimately you know you have to follow your director's vision yeah uh, they chose you for a reason lilette chose you for a reason to play this such, such and such character because she saw that character as you know like this um uh, she gives you the she gives you the opportunity to add whatever you want per se and uh, you know gives you the leeway of of adding to your character and adding you know uh, to to the extent where she is convinced as well if you can convince her that this is what uh, you know i really feel yeah because she's uh, lilet will not take any shit from anybody yeah if she sees that i mean after so many years i have seen you know she definitely has a fantastic vision so so you don't shouldn't really argue with her because when you see it on stage you've seen it coral how beautiful all her all her plays are but ultimately i think um, it's a uh, it's a uh, how all the actresses work together to put your egos aside frankly speaking because that doesn't work yaar yeah, coral you know in any in this field frankly that's one thing i've i've learned you know you cannot just leave your ego at home yaar yeah. it's it's what's your biggest downfall you know the time that you can turn around and say you're a star and not an actor i'm sorry that's when you lost it this show comes under an umbrella called cmbs academy and here we are trying to collate life learning so yes. uh, you know when we talk to an actor my biggest uh, yes but we are taking home and just what do you say that leave your ego behind in case you want to do something which will last longer and last in a good way absolutely absolutely learning which is across all horizons all discipline all profession absolutely coral you know i was fortunate enough to work in london at a restaurant where there were a lot of famous people who came there um i have had the pleasure of meeting robin williams uh, anthony hopkins emma thompson uh, pop stars you know like bruce springsteen all of them would attend would come to this restaurant and i was a hostess so i would deal with them why i'm bringing this up is about humility you know robin williams bless his soul uh, you know a man who used to make everybody laugh so much was such a quiet guy yeah he would just be yeah, i remember him standing in the bar just really quietly anthony sir anthony hopkins uh, had come for lunch with emma thompson and and one of merchant ivory uh, the directors uh, it was when i just joined the restaurant i'm talking about humility the manager uh, you know said you know these are really famous people they're coming in all the rada you have to seat them at this table and in walks anthony hopkins and so he introduced me to them and he said sir this is our new hostess you will be dealing with her next time you know you make a booking blah 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 i seated them at the table and i was like wow i'm 22 years old okay like no who am the new hopkins is soon after silence of the lambs okay Five minutes later, my manager comes to me and tells me, "So, Chitra, can you go and tell Mr. Hopkins his raw lamb chops will be ready in a minute?" So I'm like, "What?" So he said, "Go tell him his raw lamb chops will be ready in a minute." So I said, uh, "Okay." I thought maybe he did method acting for Silence of the Lambs. So I went and I said, uh, "Sir, your raw lamb chops will be ready in a little while." So he looked up at me and said, "Thank you very much." They continued with their meeting. Five minutes later, the chef calls me to the kitchen. gives me a plate of raw lamb chops with blood on it and says please go and give this to mr hopkins and i'm like you're not serious yaar and he is like please go so chitra we are not giving it to a waiter please go and give it to mr hopkins so i was like he i mean he must have go like the taste for meat or whatever while doing this role you won't believe this you swear to god coral the best experience of my life i'm going there with my hand shaking like this the plate yeah. and i go and keep it down and he looks up at me they're still talking he said oh thank you very much i his blue eyes i'll remember and he put, i put it down there and i'm dying to see what's going to whether he's going to start eating so i'm looking back like that i'm looking back and pretending to look elsewhere <laughs> and i'm looking back again and all and he caught my eye and he said come here i was just panic him like oh no now what happened you know so i i went up to the table he looks looking straight at me at my eyes and he caught my hand and he said suchitra actually i don't really bite and he kissed my hand and he said this was a joke that we decided to play my manager went up to them after they came to the restaurant this is sir anthony hopkins and emma thompson okay this is what i'm talking about as far as humility they don't know me from adam yeah they said this is a new hostess she's just joined the restaurant sir can we have a little bit of fun and sir anthony hopkins said okay just to make you feel comfortable and just break the ice 
this they just decided to play play a joke on me he agreed to play a joke on me when my manager went and said can we play a joke on this girl she's just joined new and she's just totally in awe of all this can we are you okay to play a joke on her and this was an entire joke that anthony hopkins said okay to now if that's not humility you tell that's me that's quite you know that is i mean one of the most incredible experiences of my life i don't think i'll ever experience something as as whacked out as something like that and i didn't know where to look and he actually kissed my hand and he said i don't actually bite so chitra he said this was a joke and by the time my manager came out and they all had a good laugh at my expense but i was also laughing away i was like but that incident i will never forget because it taught me humility to the he could have turned around and said i'm sorry what are you talking about i'm here for a meeting you know please don't bother me mm-hmm. he went through the whole thing you know and actually you know made somebody like me brand new who had not even started acting at that point feel so so good you know a, a, a about some actually give you a memory. memory of a lifetime most yes. definitely a memory of a lifetime i wouldn't give it up for the world so you know so as for the people watching that's what i mean when i say humility you can be whatever stature you are you can have achieved whatever you want to have achieved but uh, when it when it comes down to it it is your talent it's your god given talent that's where that's what's getting you to where you are so respect it man you know do whatever it takes to respect it and don't respect the fame and the fortune as much as the talent that has been given to you that would be my advice super chitra you are fourth woman singing the dolly from sing india sing sing india sing is a musical that i did a couple of years ago it was the first of its kind in india mm-hmm. um uh, uh, orange juice entertainment fountainhead they put that together and nadir khan directed it and uh, uh, there was a killer cast of uh, you know actors and singers and it um, we had 29 original songs written by clinton serejo composed by him and it was the first time i was getting to do of course i did i did uh, jungle book in the uk so i did do a sing, song and dance but this one actually had proper dance you know song dance acting um but um uh, this was the first time i was actually getting to do everything you know encompassed in one and a damn good role as well you know dolly so dolly plays one of the producers of the show sing india sing which is a reality show uh, which is you know this was a musical which was so great because it really it married um you know like a reality show come fiction come what was happening real plus videography with like never seen before mm-hmm. uh, but it's about this reality show of four contestants what they go through during this singing reality show and um, the politics that happen behind and there's these three producers um well one my character and Brian Tellis and the big boss is uh, Uday Benegal's character you know so there was Brian Tellis me Uday you know the old old hat uh, people and then there were this young uh, fire brands you know of all of these singers actors um, who were there uh, who are playing the contestants and there were four characters playing the hashtags because we brought in this whole thing of the social media and what it means etc yeah. so they were all in there but dolly's character in this one my god i, I don't know why yaar i get type cast being all these bad people seriously for a minute so it's good to be bad i think but um, this one also this like my my daughter came to the rehearsal the first day and she goes to nadir khan she says is my mama playing a bad person in this one also because she every time she comes to a shoot or whatever i'm always playing the bad mother in law the bad masi or the bad auntie or the you know um and um i think the explanation to that madhur bandarka gave very well when i did i said you're always giving me all of these roles yaar which you know me have this gray side and so she kya hai na to aise dikhti nahi hai na to jab tera role aisa hota hai na to thoda twist ho jata hai sorry how can i argue with that <laughs> so even if it comes in theater i do it you know um but dolly uh, you know rahul de kuna and nadir i mean rahul waited he uh, i was going through a bad time in, at that uh, in that year my father was unwell etc and i didn't know if i could commit to this character but i'm so so glad that they waited for me and i did it because it was incredible she is a uh, no nonsense she is really twisted okay i mean dolly is somebody who just uh, you know she knows what she wants she doesn't mind uh, backbiting she doesn't mind uh, doing uh, you know full uh, make, making things upside down so that she gets what she wants she doesn't mind uh, you know double crossing her own boss um, you know she's a, she's a terror uh the contestants are really frightened of her yeah and um, but she's that's it's all about ambition so she's that kind of a strong character she has only that she has that yeah you don't see any soft side to her at all okay so that those kind of women can be strong as well you don't see their soft side but you know 
uh, the strength because that's all she wants and she achieves it at the end of the play you know she becomes big boss by the end of the play um uh, so she so that was one thing about this character that i really liked that every scene that i walked on as dolly my god you know you know you can't just give it to them you know my even my song my my solo song big for dirt was when i'm frightening the shit out of those contestants you know while singing yeah mm-hmm. singing dancing and what was really incredible was because it was full choreographed movements and it was you know we had uh, balconies and we had uh, you know uh, the play going from live what's happening on the balcony to a video that was shot before of the same scene happening on uh, on the video coming back to what was happening live very very interesting show you know we had these 11 led screens all over and but as a character um to stand up in front of uh, uday benegal's character and brian tellis and all who are strong uh, you know uh, strong personas uh, mm-hmm. you know dolly really had to really give it uh, give it that all and she had to be really kadak and uh, i liked playing that there was no softiness in her at all uh, in this one so uh, it's nice sometimes to show that also just outright bad <laughs> absolutely and this character i mean today this morning i was just reading about it uh, as much as i could and i just felt that this is about the woman in the bad world and yeah when there is this woman in the bad world in a lot of ways uh, if you are in evil you have to just be there there is you no to be there. yeah there's there no is, way out there's no way yeah. out and you know that this is your life you come from yeah, you come from hard beginnings and you know you want to make something of yourself so this is it you got to do this yeah you probably ca- cannot negotiate with yourself that uh, this is not something i am giving up not right for me so, yeah yeah so yeah. again i mean soul has to be kept aside probably for such kind of yeah uh, yeah yeah okay. totally totally yeah so a very uh, amazing character and uh, nadir khan as a director um, and rahul uh, had written it um, you know they straight away i mean he straight away told me he said you know i just see you as dolly and i just see you as this hard hitting you know a um, um, woman who will not stop at anything mm-hmm. and she doesn't give a shit she doesn't give a shit about the the feelings of the uh, the the or the emotions of the of the other characters of the contestants yeah um she is out there to win she is out there to make this show a success and only for herself and she is out there to expose the boss uh, you know and she does it her own way uh, without telling anybody and she she is sly and she's manipulative and everything but not to that slapstick point of you know uh, wait and <laughs> not the not the tamil telugu movie type of uh, wait i'll be you know <laughs> uh, but very slickly done you know in the writing and in the way it was portrayed very slick so yeah, that yeah, that's why it was uh, great playing dolly one of the very uh, so something that really intrigued me in this uh, this show or this kind of show format or this kind of story format mm. is the presence of dual audiences like what i mean is that this one is yes. out of the real world yeah where there is excitement the excitement part of it we are used to yeah now then there is a showbiz part which we pretend to know yeah. a lot about but we don't know anything and then there is also the economics part of it about which we don't have any idea anything. any idea yeah so now dolly being a part of the showbiz how does she negotiate with her real audience in the play and with the audience beyond it which is watching because the audience beyond is judging her based on what yes. she's doing with the audience in the play right in the play that's right yeah so that- <clears throat> so uh, uh dolly she doesn't claim to be anything more than you know what she is she doesn't mind people seeing her as this hard hitting you mm. know a uh, woman and and being this kind of person or whatever so even to the audience who is you know the audience watching the the when she's when she is on her videos etc yeah she's you know she's talking to the audience as a no you know we know that the show is going to be a success and we know what we want and you know this is what as if you know she's the one who's put it all together and it's her idea and you know to get that kind of uh, uh, adoration as uh, you know from the audience of sing india sing yeah, yeah? but uh, for the audience watching the play uh, you know when they see that about her uh and so they get to see the, you know the both both sides her professional side when you're on that on that video uh you know just being that oh my god it's going to be the best show ever and so on and so forth and then when she's this real you know i'm going to make you do whatever i want you to do that kind of character of it you know um so i think that that's interesting for the real live audience yeah. when they see uh you know then when they see the switch between uh how people can be uh, so fake 
when they yeah and manipulative when they have to be on on camera etc and when they you know when they're off it uh, so that was interesting and what was very interesting about this play was uh, this musical was the fact that the audience got to choose yeah. at the end every show the audience had little remotes every seat had a little remote and they got to choose from the four contestants after the finale sequence so uh, there were different winners uh, you know so it wasn't that was not scripted at the end the very end it was up to the audience so that was a damn good uh, idea that they came up with and it actually worked yeah super so such as we're moving on to the last section which is the last and the fifth woman that you would like to talk about no i you know actually ideally i want to talk about a character who but it's not yet uh, it's uh, it's uh, something i've done on the web um, madhu let me just say a few few lines about her madhu is the shrew housewife of poor, again joyce and gupta's character <laughs> in uh, the teacher story in um, womanly voices also another prime time theater company um, that's actually on uh, um, uh, the the tat theater the theater uh, thing the what do you call it cine play that i think we we shot it for that but uh, she is a strong woman in the sense she is again bad again <laughs> uh, she's a she's a complete shrew she's uh, someone who really ill treats this poor little child who her husband who is a singing teacher brings to the house she's someone who is just after money 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 because you know they have come from a poor background and uh, that's all she wants she keeps pushing her husband towards that only no 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 money for this money for that you know she doesn't have a kind bone in her body um but um, she gets uh, she gets what she wants she's another woman who really gets what she wants but by whacking joyce and gupta on the behind with us uh, with a broom literally <laughs> in the play but uh, so i mean so, so she's definitely a strong character and he's really scared of her i mean poor joy used to get really scared of that one sequence where i'm sweeping and that's when i go and i whack him with the broom he used to get scared when we when every thing i say aaj kitna maregi yaar with the with the jhadu you know but uh, it was nice to play it was nice to play because there's a lot of comedy in her character as well uh, other than other than it being uh, you know uh, this complete shrew uh, there's a lot of comedy uh, in her dialogue and the way she is etc and uh, you know poor thing how she, uh, that poor child you know how she oh again i got to learn bengali in dada aaj majo dekh wait <laughs> oh poda kopal what scenes did i commit in my last life that i should be tied to this apology of him and <laughs> <laughs> so it was that kind of a woman frankly modu but uh, as you can see she was definitely someone who you know opened her mouth and said whatever came but what i wanted to talk about quickly is though it's not theater it's something that i did recently for netflix and it's on air right now it's betal the show betal right. and i played this commandant yeah commandant tyagi and it was the first time i was playing this role and why i wanted to talk about it is because of being a commandant in a task force i never done this before in my 26 year career and uh, it was so interesting to play because i also play the character who gets possessed right uh, so there is a complete change from what i am in the beginning of episode 1 till the end of the series um and a well, big compliment was when someone said oh there are scenes where you don't have to say anything you frighten the shit out of us so i was like wow okay you know i didn't have to be wearing zombie makeup but if i could scare somebody not bad but then again see again i'm negative but <laughs> but uh, but great fun doing this role because you know uh, to play this strong character um uh, you know to be able to command i was like wow you know they've chosen me and i'm like i have to command this entire squad i have to be believable when i command vinit uh, you know vinit kumar and uh, ahana kumra and all of them are in my squad and they look up to me when i say certain things uh, you know uh, to them it has to be believable but it was so helpful that when you want to play a character like this when you get other things that happen around you as um, a push with the uh, like uh, uh, red chilies they made us rehearse we, rather they made us train under uh, uh, somebody who used to be with the army yeah mm-hmm. so we did, did training every morning in our uniforms wearing the full gear actually running this that carrying actual guns this that you know doing the the work so that things like that were believable so when we did a scene with a gun with an actual gun we knew how to hold it we knew how to aim we knew how to shoot we knew you know all of that and it was absolutely believable believable also the physicality of it you know to play a strong woman yeah and i'm not big yeah i'm 54 you know but to have that command as an actor even when you're playing a strong person but you're not your build is not 
you know just to be able to have to hold your own in front of somebody even if your stature is small you know uh, all of that just the stance the way you walk the way you talk the way you look at somebody how would your health ha- head tilt how would you be standing you know um, a commandant in an army is not going to stand like this you know even if she's talking to her friends yeah she won't be sta- you know she won't you know it would just be kadak uh and and so that was very very interesting for me to play a strong character like that and when uh, the switch happens and she gets possessed when tyagi gets possessed so that was that scary i scared myself frankly speaking sharukh khan at the rap party he said you are really scary when you know i was i was like yeah that's a big compliment you know if i scared him when he watched the rushes that's good um but uh, um to to when especially when she gets possessed then the dialogue is less okay mm-hmm. uh she's a, a, a as commandant tyagi she's a completely uh, you know corrupt uh, she's a completely corrupt co- commandant who just wants money in her pocket and she'll agree to do a b c and d just mm-hmm. so that she gets her money and uh, <clears throat> but when she gets possessed etc uh, she has to show that command still because she keeps switching between being possessed and not yeah uh, she has to still show her command uh, to her to her squad while they are there but she also knows that she's under the command of the betal yeah so she has to do his bidding yeah despite being this strong character you know so all of that together for an actor to work all of that in your head space is damn interesting so that was one other strong character i really wanted to talk about because i hadn't played anything like that before in 26 years <laughs> so thank you so much for your time and uh, oh entirely my pleasure had a great time just listening to you and coming to the audience just wanted to say a big thank you to all of you who are watching you know i hope this has been helpful in some way or the other mm-hmm. but uh, i'm passionate about my work and that's one piece of advice i'd just like to give whoever it is who want, intends to be an actor or is wants to continue to be an actor just be completely passionate about your work just believe in yourself and just give it your all i mean if you have a god given talent and if you're getting the opportunity what more do you want you know just respect that uh, respect that and do not respect anything else with all the trappings that come with this acting career you know just be true to yourself and just when when you give your all it shows on stage and that's when your audience really really loves you and really loves the work that you do and what bigger blessing for an actor absolutely and i wish the world many more such a players like you who would come forward thank you so that's that. sweet thank you so much koral yeah, wonderful us, wonderful entertain us make us learn a lot of things and at the same time take a lot back in your kitchen and tell you about how humble anthony hopkins is absolutely <laughs> that was a very big take away for us thank you so much and pleasure bye-bye. coral bye bye and uh, fair uh, yes. thank you to stay safe yes 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 hopefully see you around okay lots of love thank you so much for all watching bye bye